Hi, everybody. It's Michael May of MVP Realty uh, contacting you from Southwest Florida. The weather today is very nice here, and I'm looking forward to a very nice um, winter season here. I wanted to put together a very nice presentation for you. It's going to take a while, so I hope that you uh, will be patient uh, discussing about the three most important issues that we're all talking about. And I know that you'll be having these conversations um, during your Thanksgiving dinner, before or afterward, and probably at your place of worship. There'll be some discussions about the three most important things. The three most important things that we're really all talking about with regard to real estate will be the issues of uh, where our mortgage rates are headed, as well as our home values, and is there a recession coming around the corner? I know we all have that concern. Let's talk about where mortgage rates are headed. You probably know this, but they're the Treasury fund rate is actually different than the interest rates that we receive for home loans, auto loans, et cetera. The reason is, is that there are two components to the um, final interest rates that we receive. One is a federal funds rate, and the other one is called the spread. The spread is the profit margin for the lenders. Everyone's got to make money, right? So for the past 50 years, uh, the 30 year uh, mortgage rates have been followed or have been influenced by the spread rate of about 1.72. And as you can see on the chart here, the green is the 30 year fixed rate and the blue is the federal funds rate, which is the 10 year treasury yield, which we all follow. So even though we've had an average of 1.72% uh, of a yield spread, it has actually gone up to an average of 2.775. So that when you look on the far right here at 4.62, which is the 10-year treasury yield, also known as a federal funds rate, when you add that to the spread of 3.090, the interest rate is actually 7.76 for a 30-year fixed. And this was in this was in August and September. But that's basically where we still are. Why do we have a larger gap than what we used to have where we were at 1.72 or sitting now at almost three? The biggest reason is the Treasury's uncertainty about the prepayment risk that is growing. And what does that mean? That means that lenders are seeing that there's a possibility that they'll end up having to um, lose money on a 30-year fixed mortgage if someone refinances. So what they're doing is they're hedging their bets by adding a little bit more room. So from 1.72, they've gone up now to 3%. It's like a 70% increase, 75% increase from historic uh, norms. And that's because of the uncertainty that if interest rates drop and people still haven't refinanced, they'll end up probably refinancing. And a lender was depending upon making money during the 30-year period, and it won't last. As we can see here, the federal funds reserve rate has been working on um, damping down the uh, inflation rates. So inflation shows signs of decline, the, the federal funds rate and the lender margins may decline with the possibility of interest rates in the six plus range in 2024 with five and three quarters also a possibility. As you can see, there have been a number of monthly increases in the federal funds rate. And what has happened is, is that they've had three pauses this year because they're starting to see signs that the um, actual inflation um, has abate, is abating and that the um, hikes in the rates have slowed the economy, which is what they want, but they don't want to go too low. Here, uh, we're seeing that the bottom line is that the interest rates are likely to be lower, perhaps even lower than many optimists think in the weeks and months ahead. A year from now, I think it's more likely that not, than not that mortgage rates are back under 6%. An estimate strategist from Home Economics. The chief economist at First American weighs in. He said, mortgage rate stability, even if the stabilization occurs with rates at a higher level, is the key to an eventual housing recovery. And why is that? It's because of consumer confidence. Consumers will know that interest rates, which went up, are coming down, and then they're going to stabilize. And when they stabilize, they're not going to be looking for a lower interest rate 
They're going to believe that this interest rate is long term and they'll start making decisions on what they want to do in terms of buying a home. So where are home values headed? Believe it or not, 23% of the people still believe uh, prices will depreciate. This is in a very important point because I have clients that are on the fence about buying. I have people from out of the country that are looking at their situations in their countries and are thinking that, well, we see that prices are dropping here, business has slowed, and we can expect that to happen in America. But that's not going to happen. And here's why. Here's the sentiment. Here we see month over month changes where in the beginning, there were a lot of activity related to uh, home sales going up. And this is related to uh, the boom of activities that we've had. And then since the home values were higher than what the averages had been historically, they made a correction and they dropped a bit. Okay. Now this chart begins in 2022. It goes through 2023. And then what we started seeing is that once the corrections were made, the home values started meandering up. And that's a good sign. So we've been through the trough, and now we're seeing a modest increase in home values. Mortgage rate stability, even if the stabilization occurs with rates at a higher level, is the key to an eventual housing recovery. And that's from the chief. Uh, Deputy Chief Economist at First American. Again. So when we look at the monthly price movements on a 49-year average, month over month from 1973, we can see that home values go up and they go down. It just happens to correspond with the weather. You see more sales activity in spring summer and fall. And then when the winter time comes, less sales, people make pricing adjustments in the hope of getting a buyer. And then when the season returns and activity goes back up, they're more optimistic and they may raise their rates. They may get more for their home. But this 49-year average shows month over month that we're typically under 1% in this slide, what we're viewing here is the 49-year average for monthly price improvements. We can see that following 2022, when there was so much activity going on, on sales and property values going up so much, what we realized that there had to be a little correction, and there was. And then in February of this year, we started seeing the prices coming back up above the 49-year average. But as time went on, the difference between the 49-year average and the actual 2023 started evening out. And as summer ended and sales slowed around America, we see, again, a slight decline from the 49-year average. But again, this is 49 years of history that we cannot ignore. This is what guides us to have a feeling that we're going to be doing much better. Now, when we look at the actual year-end home forecast, we have six different views of this, ranging from a high of Fannie Mae of 6.7% by the end of 2023 to the National Association of Realtors showing 0.1% in varying ranges. If you add all six together and average them out, it's 3.9%. And that's a healthy property appreciation. And I'm sure you must agree with that. And let's look at the 49-year average from 1980 to 2022, showing right here, 4.92 4.92 is the average monthly price movements seasonally adjusted. We've had some years above that and years below it, starting from 1980. And of course, 
the great finan fiscal financial crisis that we just had from 2008 to a little after 2010, 2012. Of course, but you have to realize, as we all do, that the housing market is what actually caused that problem. In past years, it may have been other reasons that have caused the market to change. But this was purely because of people buying properties and lenders providing financing that was high risk. But overall, we're seeing price movements, especially now, currently, in line with the 4.92, 42-year average. These are all signs that are very, very good for us. Estimated home price performance, December to December, forecasted in the third quarter of 2023. It is estimated that we'll be at 3.32%. We'll drop a little bit, 2.17. Then in 2025, we'll move up to 3.24, 3.79, and 4.18 by 2027. I don't see any recessions in there, and I'm sure you do not either. These are good numbers. The question is, still in people's minds, and many detractors who are projecting what's going to happen in the future without any basis for that because they haven't seen these charts that I'm sharing with you. Is there a recession coming around the corner? Because if that happens and people lose their jobs, then they won't make their payments. Delinquencies will go up, foreclosures will go up, and the whole economy will crash, right? Like in 2008, 2009, and 2010. I don't think that's gonna happen, and here's why. We've had a major shift in consumer sentiment regarding their beliefs about if there's gonna be a recession. A year ago, in October of 2022, 63% of the people felt that it was going to happen. And this is a, a survey from the Wall Street Journal. It's a survey of economists, not people, but economists who are looking down and getting a, a better lay of the land than us. And they said that only 32% felt that we were going to have a recession. Here we are 12 months further forward. This has entirely shifted. We've gone up 15%. We've gone down 15% in people's beliefs that we're gonna have a recession. And we've gone up 15% in people who do not believe that we're going to have a recession. So we're almost at 50-50 here, which is a big difference between that in 2022 in October and 2023 in October. That's a huge shift in consumer sentiment. And it will continue that way. Many people are detracting and saying, well, people are going to start losing their jobs. They're going to get into a recession, they're going to lose their homes. And my view is, is that if the 75-year average is 5.7%, and today we're at 3.9%, that's not a bad thing. And I'm not speaking, I'm not speaking um, badly about the tragedy of someone losing their job maybe losing their home. That's not part of this discussion. We're simply using the numbers and talking about what the national average is, has been over 75 years and what the current situation is. And the average during the great financial crisis was 8.3 and we're less than half of that. And we're in a really good position in America. So with all due respect, that if we ever do get up to 5.7%, if that ever happens, that's right in line with the 75-year average, right? So here's the projections for unemployment over the next three years from the Wall Street Journal Economic Survey. Right now, we're at 3.9% 2023. 
We're going to go up to 4.3, 4.4, 4.3, 4.2. Four point one, and three years from now we're going to be at four point oh two percent. Tell me if that's not a good number. There's still detractors out there. They're still saying that you know, what about people being slow in making their payments? What about the foreclosures? Here's an example. A eighteen year example that we can see that in the great financial crisis between 2008 and 2010, we had a lot of people who lost their homes. But then the trend continued going down. And then in 2020 and 2021, there was a foreclosure moratorium. There still were some foreclosures, but they were at record lows. Look at third quarter 2023. Now, in 2020 and 2021, 2022, and 2023, there have been 124,000 foreclosures in America. Why are people resisting foreclosures? They're recasting their loans. They're keeping their jobs. They're catching up on their payments. And if they have to sell, they're selling with more equity than they've ever had in their lives. But that equity that they want to keep is why they're fighting like hell to keep their homes. And we're only at 124,000 people who have been foreclosed on. And again, it's horrible that that happens. I'm not trivializing that. I'm just saying these are the numbers that we're based, basing our future upon. And 124,000, as hard as it is for those 124,000 homes, it's a lot better than it has been in the past. So let's talk about payments. People being delinquent on their payments. Look at this chart. It keeps on going further and further down. And this is the percentage of mortgage loans that are three months payments or more past due or in the process of foreclosure. This is 0.55% for Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac as homes that are seriously in delinquency. So this is forecasting the future of foreclosures. And these numbers are very, very good. So come on. I can understand why people believe that the chance of recession is, is going down. And the people that believe that we're not going to have a recession is going up. These numbers say it right here. Some people believe that if we do have a recession, it's going to kill property values. But look at this chart. From 1980 to 2020 and 40 years, we've had six recessions. And four out of the six properties still appreciated. Aside from 2008, with the great financial crisis, yes. Again, lenders who have provided the financing and the zeal to buy in 04, 05, 06, and 07, and the overzealous bond market which produced some, which lenders created some crazy loan products, which the bond market was able to sell, which were weak bonds that caused the collapse. Caused that at 19.7%. But in every recession, four out of the six for the last 42 years Property values have gone up. Well, that's it for me. I hope you enjoyed my take on the future of our economy. I'm happy to provide this information to you, and I hope that you remember it and share it. 
I'll be putting a link on my e-newsletter today where you can download these charts that you can put on your phone that you can share with people. You'll have enough time to get it onto your phone. So if you're sitting around with people, you can give them the case that the market is not as bad as many people think. It's funny how people will always want to show the negative side, but not necessarily the good side. And you can defend the truth with these charts. And I hope that you remember me, Michael May of MVP Realty. I provided these to you. I have the desire to want to educate people and to help people understand how it all works. My finance and real estate background compels me to do this. I'm not only showing you the information, I'm explaining to you why it's true. And truth does not lie. And numbers tell the truth. I hope you all have a nice Thanksgiving. I hope you remember me, Michael May, MVP Realty at 239-989-6357. I hope that you have a good day. I hope you have a good weekend and I hope you have a good Thanksgiving. Be well now. Bye-bye.